Ernstville residents continue to take advantage of early voting. We have an update and we have tips to keep your kids safe this Halloween. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Thursday, October 27th, 2016. I'm Sarah Mannell. Early voting continues here in Town Hall. Channel 18's Sarah Colvin traveled to the third floor for an update. I'm Sarah Colvin standing here on the third floor of Barnesville Town Hall where there has been a steady stream of early voters coming in to cast their ballots. At this time, almost 2,000 people have voted. Early voting continues Saturday at the Barnesville Police Station and right here at Town Hall all next week. Here we are on the third floor of Town Hall, the busiest place in Town Hall this week. We've had almost 2,000 people come in and cast their ballots since Monday. Town Clerk Ann Quirk, did you expect this? Not, not at all. Not at all. This is a surprise. It's, it's wonderful. It's exciting. And you have to think about this. This is landmark. I mean, this is the first time ever in Massachusetts we've done early voting. So I think it's a great idea, but I never expected this many people. Absolutely, and obviously the message is getting out there. Again, just seeing the steady stream of people come in, excited to vote. What are you hearing from, from the voters? That they're happy that they've done this. They're happy it's over. Yeah, can they turn off their TVs now and not have to listen to any more advertisements? Um, you know, they're, all in all, they're very excited. The biggest thing we want them to know is, yes, their votes are going to be tabulated, but not until Election Day. So they all will be tabulated, just like all absentees will be tabulated, but not until Election Day. And I think that's really important for people to know, because I have heard out in the community, it's like, ooh, who's winning? And we, don't, we won't know, and I think that might, you know, be problematic if we did know who's mm -hmm. winning. So it'll all be um, on Election Night. I'm sure that makes some extra work for you and your staff. It's an enormous amount of work because these all have to be entered individually. So we will be standing by a machine and entering all the ballots in on election day by precinct. So we found a voter, Chris Abdow of Marston's Mills. Chris, what made you want to come out and early vote today? Next week, I'm not sure if I had the time to do it. So this was the opportunity that I had because I, I work around the Cape and this is just happened to be convenient for me to be here today. It's Saturday at the police department, I think that will be a big push. I think we'll have a lot of people. There's more space there. There's plenty of parking. And we have that whole first floor um, room, the training room. So that's wonderful, too. So we'll have 15 booths set up, just like you were going to the polling locations. And we'll have our auto mark. And we'll have lots of people helping to get you through the lines and get in and get out. Wonderful. Well, again, that's Saturday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the police station? That is correct. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, Anne, I know you have a lot on your mind. Thank you so much, and uh, we are so excited to see so many civically active citizens voting, and early voting continues next week. It does. Another week of this, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. Monday is Halloween and it's important to consider your child's safety before sending them out to trick or treat. To get some safety tips, we chat with Barnstable Police Deputy Chief Matthew Sonnebend. I'm Sarah Mandel. I am here with Deputy Chief Matthew yes, Sonnebend. Thank Hi, you so much. Hi, how are you? Good, thank <laughs> you so much. Beautiful day out here on Village Green today, It's huh? gorgeous. And you know, before we know it, uh, the street will be filled with trick-or-treaters Monday the 31st. They're closing down the street for trick-or-treat yes, this year. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Is that a first in a while that they've done that? Um, it has been done in the past. It's, uh, it's the first time we've done it in a while. Um, but you do notice that over the years, there has been an increasing popularity with the event. And as with just about anything else, the fear is that when you get all those cars that are parked along the street and the kids are running in and out, they're excited, they're trying to cross the street, you know, in places that might not be so safe, and then you throw in the time of year and the lighting might not be as well and cars driving down the street. It's just a hazard we want to, you know, a tragedy in the making we want to avoid. So if, if the easiest thing we could do is, you know, close the street and let everybody have a good time and everybody be safe, that's, you know, that's what we'll do. And that, of course, is on Monday, October 31st. 
first from 4 to 6 on Main Street. Such a popular event. Yep, the street will be closed from 3 to 6, and the event starts after that. Well, the street will close down at 3. Great. Thank you for that information. Mm -hmm. Definitely something drivers will want to be aware of oh, as well. Aware of that. Yeah. Uh, and then I want to talk to you. If someone's maybe not heading to Safe Trick or Treat here mm -hmm. on Main Street, Hyannis, so they're going to go out uh, late at night or uh, when it's darker outside. Mm -hmm. What are some things they need to be thinking of and parents should be reminding their children as they head out just to keep them safe? Well, you know, a lot of it is, Sarah, a lot of it is basic common sense, you know, and a lot of it also is the same things we exercise every day. You want to walk on the appropriate side of the street, walk with a sidewalk of it's possible if the area is well lit you know stay in that area if you know if possible uh, carry self lighting you know like flashlights or glow sticks or lanterns battery operated lanterns you want to avoid any like open flame we don't want anybody carrying around torches in your little villager outfits but you want to have something that cars can identify you and see you from a distance away a white light is always visible from a far distance so have something like that uh, reflective tape on your costumes I know the kids really think it's really cool to put a lot of reflective material on their scary costumes so put some reflective material on there or on your bags or something like that Walking groups, especially younger children, you should be in groups. There should be a supervising adult to provide advice and just general safety. Have a cell phone with you. Uh, be familiar with the area you're going to be in. Um, a lot of people tend to go to you know their own neighborhoods so they know a lot of the people. You know, So that's usually not a problem. Uh, avoid going into houses. You want to stay outside of people's houses, especially people you do not know unless you have an adult or someone else with you at the time. Uh, you want to make sure that the house is appropriately lit. You know, someone should prob will probably have on an outdoor lantern or light of some sort, letting you people know that they are engaging in the activity, and indoor lighting would be appropriate as well. Um, also, you may want to uh, consider your costume choices. You don't want to have anything you can trip on, or you don't want to have anything that's going to obstruct your vision or make you difficult to see uh, for, for motor vehicles and, other th and things like that. Yeah, some really important things. When you say walking on the appropriate side of the street, just to, to double check with you, I think the rule of thumb is you walk towards the vehicles. That is that is, right? That is correct. Pedestrians and runners should be moving against traffic on the shoulder of the road. Bicycles would move with traffic because they are also considered a vehicle. But, you know, for our purposes here with Halloween, you want to walk with traffic, you know, into, you know, towards traffic. Not into traffic. You don't want to walk into traffic. You want to walk towards traffic so you can see what's coming. You know, you don't want something coming up behind you. And so, you know, if you have to step off the road, you have enough time to step off the road and get out of the way. Wonderful. Some really important things that we need to keep in mind as we head out there to trick or treat. Uh, anything else we, we, we should remember? Um, yep. Also, you know, you want to keep in mind that you may want to go through your kids' treats when they get them home. You want to make sure that all of them are appropriately wrapped. If you can't avoid, you know, homemade things necessarily, but, you know, I make give it a good going through to make sure that there's nothing obviously in there that's going to cause a problem. We really haven't had a problem with that in the past, but you know, it's always good common sense just to check what what the kids have been given if you weren't especially if you weren't with them yourself, you know, you want to make sure what they got that is properly wrapped that the you know, the candies aren't already open or damaged goods or things like that just to avoid sickness or anything else like that. Wonderful. Well, thank you no so problem. much for joining anytime, us. Of, of, of course, our guest was Deputy Chief Matthew Sonnabend. And uh, again, thanks for those trick-or-treat safety tips. No, thank you, and have a wonderful Halloween. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable This Morning, weekdays at 8 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will have our weekly arts and culture segment. We'll chat with Assistant Harbor Master Brian Taylor. Plus, we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell. Channel 18 is the town of Barnstable's government access television station. Our staff of four, a news coordinator, assistant news coordinator, and two videographers are responsible for all aspects of producing our programming. Every weekday we produce Barnstable This Morning, a live hour-long news program that includes live interviews with local leaders, feature segments, weather, sports, boating, and fishing reports. Barnstable Today, a 10-minute newscast, is also produced on a daily basis with a focus on board, committee, and commission meetings and special events in town. Our staff is also responsible for coordinating coverage of more than 30 monthly board, committee, and commission meetings, producing special programming, and maintaining Channel 18's informational bulletin boards. 
Channel 18 headquarters are at Barnstable Town Hall. We have a small television studio and office, two camera equipped hearing rooms, and a control room and operations center on the top floor of the building. Channel 18 is solely operated by the town of Barnstable.